What is up you guys? Today we're going to go over another algorithm video, longest substring without repeating characters. This problem is asked by literally every single company, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Uber, any company, you name it, they ask this question. It's one of the most popular questions on leak code and I figured it'd be a good problem to go over. And before I get into the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and support me on Patreon. Okay, so for this problem, we're gonna be given a string and we need to find the longest substring without repeating characters. So let's say we were given the following string. The longest substring with no repeating characters in this string would be WKE, or KEW. Each one of these substrings have completely unique characters and we need to return the longest one, specifically just the integer size. So both of them have a size three, so we would just return three from our function. So let's talk about the brute force approach real quick. What we could do is have a nested for loop to compute all of the substrings in this string. And that would be an O of N squared operation. And then for every single substring, we would need to determine if it has unique characters, and that would be an O of N operation. So if we do O of N squared times O of N, that's where the O of N cubed comes from. Now, obviously this is not the best way to solve this problem, but it is good to at least start off with the solution so you can work your way up to the more optimized approach. So for our optimized approach, we are going to utilize a sliding window algorithm. So a sliding window algorithm is a window or section that is formed over parts of your data. And in this case, our data is just the string. We move this window in increments over our data to perform some sort of computation. And once again, in our case, this is finding the longest substring with no repeating characters. So sliding window sounds fancy, but really all it's doing is it's looking at parts of your data incrementally. So let's walk through a full example as to how this sliding window algorithm would work. We're gonna have an I and J pointer both starting at our zero index in our string. Additionally, we're gonna have a max variable, which is gonna keep track of the maximum length substring that we come across that has no repeating characters. And then we're going to initialize a set. And this set is going to keep track of the unique characters that we see in our window. So right now, our I pointer is looking at the character P. We need to ask ourselves, has P been seen? Well, if we look inside of our set, it's empty right now. So no, it hasn't. So that means we're going to add P to our set and compute the length of the window. The length of our window will always be the difference between our I and J pointer plus one. The reason why we do plus one is because J minus I alone is zero based. Those are looking at indices. So we need to add one to offset it. So if we do I minus j plus one, that would equal one, which corresponds to the singular p substring that we have in our set. So what we are essentially saying so far is that substring p is the longest substring with no repeating characters, and that means we need to update our max to just be of length one. Next, we're gonna move our i pointer again and check if w is in our set. Notice J pointer, we're not even worried about that right now. We're only concerned with our I pointer. So W is not in our set. That means we're going to add it and then we're going to compute the new length of our window. So if we do I minus J plus one, that would now equal two and that corresponds to the substring PW. And notice PW obviously has unique characters. So we're gonna update our max once again because two is greater than one. Next, we're gonna move our I pointer forward again and check if W is in our set. In this case, W is already in our set. So now we're going to move our J pointer forward. We're going to remove the character at that index from our set. And this is the key part of a sliding window algorithm because we always are looking at sections of the string where I is always greater than J. So right now, J is looking at index zero, which is character P. That means we're going to remove P from our set and move J forward. And then we're gonna ask ourselves, is W still in our set? In this case, yes it is. So we're going to remove W from our set and then once again, move J forward. And now we're at a point where both I and J are looking at the same index. Once again, we ask ourselves, is W still in our set? No, it is not. So now 
we can add W into our set once again and compute the length of our window. So if we do I minus J plus one, this is just of length one, and this corresponds to the substring W. However, in this case, length one is not greater than our max, so we're gonna leave max the same. We move I again and check if K is in our set. It is not, so we're going to add it. We compute the length of our window. I minus J plus one is equal to two, which corresponds to the substring WK. Our max is already two, so we don't have to update it. We move our I pointer again and check if E is in our set. It isn't, so we add it into our set. We compute the length of our window. I minus J plus one is three, where the substring is WKE. Three is greater than our max, so we're gonna update max. We're going to move our I pointer again, and we're checking if W is in our set. In this case, it is. So we're going to look at our J pointer, which is looking at character W. We're going to remove it from our set and move our J pointer forward. Now we can see that we no longer have a W in our set, so we can successfully add the W that our I pointer is looking at currently. We compute the length of our window. I minus J plus one is three, which corresponds to the substring KEW. However, our max is already at three, so we don't have to update it. And since our I pointer is already greater than the length of our string, we are now done iterating and we return three from our function. Okay, let's implement the code for this solution. We're given a string s and we need to just return an integer, the longest substring. So the first thing we wanna do is just check if our input is valid. So if our string is null or empty, then we know we're not gonna have any substring. So we can just return zero. And then now we have to initialize a couple things that we talked about. We had an I pointer, a J pointer, we had a max variable, and we also have a set of characters, right? Because we need to keep track of what unique characters we have in our window. So to start the sliding window algorithm off, we need to be moving our I pointer forward. So we can say while I is less than S dot length, let's just extract the character at the I pointer position. So we could say S char at I. And now this is where the sliding window approach comes. We need to check if character C is already in our set. If it is, then that's when we're going to be moving our J pointer forward. And at every index that our J pointer is at, we're going to remove the character from our set. So to do that, we're gonna say while set dot contains the character C, if it contains it, then we're going to do set dot remove S dot char at the pointer J. So if our set contains the character C, and it's gonna do it in a while loop, then it will remove the character at the J index. And on every iteration, we're going to increase J. When we come out of this while loop, we know that character C on line seven is not in our set. So what we can do is we can just say set dot add C, and now we're going to compute the length of our window. So it was I minus J plus one. So we need to determine if th that length is greater than our max. So we can say max is equal to math dot max between max and I minus J plus one. And then once we come out of that calculation, we're going to increase I. And then finally, we just need to return max from our function. So that's actually it. That is the sliding window algorithm. So let's check if this solution works. And it does. So let's talk about our time complexity. It may seem like this algorithm is n squared because we have the nested while loops, but it's actually linear. We have two pointers, i and j, and in the worst case, both of those pointers would have to touch every single character. What that means is the algorithm is technically two times n, but we're just going to drop the constant to just be linear time. And then our space complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the size of our string. 
we have to add, in the worst case, every single character inside of our set. And this would be in the scenario that our entire input is in fact the substring that has no repeating characters. So that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I plan to do a lot more videos over the next coming weeks on algorithms, so definitely stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and support me on Patreon, and I'll see you guys in the next one.